Okay, in this video, I'm gonna be continuing with every question that has ever been asked on similarity. If you wanna use this document, it's linked in the description. I've already done similar, similar shapes in the first one, so I'm gonna be concentrating on length, area, and volume scale factors. Now, I know what's not letting me do this. Let me just double click this here. Great, take me straight through to the questions. These are the ones that don't feel like they've got shapes drawn with the diagrams, but they're all to do with like length, area, and volume. Now I'm gonna do just a quick bit of reminder at the beginning. When we have a length scale factor, which I'm gonna call K, if we change that and it becomes an area scale factor, it becomes K squared. And if it is a volume scale factor, it is K cubed. And we're basically gonna be like jumping back and forth between all of these different things to help us answer some of these questions that we've got here. So it says that cone A and cone B are mathematically similar, and the ratio of the volume of cone A to cone B is 27 to eight. So we have a volume ratio, which is 27 to eight. And then it talks about the surface area of cone A, and it wants us to show the surface area of cone B. So we're working in this K cubed, we wanna take it to K squared. So I think in order to do that, I'm gonna to go to length. Now to go to the length, we're gonna do the cube root of these numbers. Now you could do them on your calculator, but the cube root of 27 is three, and the cube root of eight is two. I'll just show you that with one of them, that the cube root, let me just quickly type this in, why has it been funny? we shall do the cube root of 27 is three. Now, because my question is about surface area, I'm gonna change it to area, and that means that I am gonna square. Okay, I'm gonna square it. So three squared is nine, and two squared is four. So this means that the surface area is in a ratio of nine to four, and that's for A to B. Well, the A part is 297, so we're gonna try and find out what the B is. Well. 297 represents nine parts. So if I divide that by nine, I will find out what one part is, and then I will multiply it by four to find out the four parts for B. So I'll do 297, I'll find out one part, which is 33, and I'll times that by four. I don't think I typed that in right, I typed it by 44, and I'll times that by four, which is 132. So this means that the surface area of B is 132. The marks come from figuring out the different ratios that we have over here, and you get the second mark for this one, and just 132 from this arithmetic that we have at the end. So you're going to see a lot of these questions jumping back and forth between the different k, k cubed, k squared, and k. So this one says that the surface area of a to b is this. So the area one, remember the area is k squared, is 3 to 4. And we've got the volume, so we're going to want to go from the area to the volume. Well, I think what we'll do is we'll go first of all to the length, and to go from the area to the length, we're gonna do the square rooting. So we'll leave that as the square root of three, and then we're gonna do the square root of four, which is two. And so now I'm gonna do the volume, which is k cubed. So that means we're gonna cube these, or do it to the power of three. Two to the power of three is two times two times two, which is eight. And now my calculator, I'm gonna do the square root of three. I'm gonna cube that value that we've got there. So my answer cubed is either 5.196, or you could write it as three root three. I don't really mind. I'm probably gonna write it as three root three just because I think it looks a bit neater. So I'm gonna take this information, and it says the volume of shape B is 10. So our current ratio is three root three to eight, and our B is 10. So we're trying to figure out what this is. So the 10 is represented by eight parts. So I'm gonna find out what one part is by dividing it by eight, and I'm gonna multiply it by three root three because there are 5.19 or those three root three parts. And that should give us our answer. So I'm gonna do my 10 divided by eight, and I'm gonna multiply that by the three root three parts that we've got there. And I'll press SD so that we have it written like this. It wants it correct to three significant figures. So that is gonna be 6.50 centimeters cubed and that is three significant figures. I think probably the weirdest part is the fact that we had three root three. If you prefer to deal with three root three as just 5.196 or 5.2, then that would be perfectly fine. You would just be saying that's 5.2 and you'd be changing that to a 5.2 as well. But if you're gonna do A-level maths, you probably wanna get used to using thirds as much as possible as they tend to come up lots and lots. So we've got 6.50, which was the right answer there. Okay, now we have got um, three different solid shapes. Okay, so they're gonna do some mixing up. We've got three shapes. The surface area of A 
is 4 and the surface area of B is 25. Now area and surface area are the same kind of thing. Remember area is k squared and this is for A to B. They have said that that ratio therefore is going to be 4 to 25. So if I want to find out something about length later on, I know what to do. It then says that the ratio of the volume of shape B to C is 27 to 64. So this is our volume which is k cubed, that is for b to c is 27 to 64. Let's read what the question says. Work out the ratio of the height of a to the height of c. Well, height is just a measure of length, and so we need to make sure that we find the k values for these. So we're going to find the length, which is k. That means we're going to do the square rooting. The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 25 is 5, okay? Now, for the volume, we also want to find out what length is, so we're going to do it as k. Now, because it's k cubed, I'm going to do the cube rooting of these. The cube root of 27 is 3, and the cube root of 64 is 4. Now, it wants us to find out the ratio of the height of a to c. And the problem here is that the 5 and the 3, they don't match each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this one. I'm going to multiply the whole ratio by 3 so that I get 6 to 15. And I'm going to multiply this whole ratio by 5, which will give me 15 to 20. Now, the reason I did that is because I wanted these 15s. I wanted them to match so that the overall ratio is 6 to 15 to 20, and that is for A to B to C. Now the question only wants the ratio of A to C. So the ratio of A to C is 6 to 20, but it wants it in its simplest form, which is going to be 3 to 10. Now this was a pretty tricky question. So the first of all, you come up with these two ratios, you combine them together and you can only combine them if you're comparing the same number of parts for B that we have here. That was that 15. And then we could ignore the 15 because we just wanted to compare A and C. So we have 3 and 10 just here. OK, they do quite a lot of these questions. This one feels really similar. It says A, B and C are three spheres. The volume of sphere A is 125 and the volume of sphere B is, 100, is 27, not 127. Remember, volume is k cubed. So their ratio is 125 to 27. Now we can look at the ratio of sphere B's radius to sphere C's radius is 1 to 2. Now the radius of the sphere is a measure of the length. So that one's already in k. It wants us to work out now the ratio of the surface area of A to C. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to need to find k squared for both of them. So I'm going to begin by finding length by doing the cube root of these. The cube root of 125 is 5, and you could check that on your calculator, and the cube root of 27 is 3. Remember that length is k, not k squared. And what we're actually trying to do here, because we're doing surface area, I'm trying to find an area which is k squared. So that means I'm going to take these values and I am going to square them, which is going to give me 25 and 9. Now, this one's nice and easy because I've already got the k. If I want to find out what the area is going to be, which is k squared, I'm just going to take these values and I'm going to square them. Square them here. So 1 squared is 1 and 2 squared is 4. Now, just like in the previous part, if I wanted to find the ratio of A to C, the thing that doesn't match is this part that we've got here. So I'm going to rewrite this ratio of 1 to 4. If I take this ratio and I multiply it by 9, I get 9 to 36. And the good thing about that is that now I've got these 9s matching. So that if I want to have the ratio of A to B to C for the surface area, it's 25 to 9 to 36. But we only want the ratio of A and C. So it is just going to be 25 to 36. And that is just the ratio that we're looking for for A to C. So 25 to 36, there's our answer for that one right here. OK, this time it says the circumference of circle B is 90% the circumference of A. Then it says find the ratio of the area of circle A to the area of circle B. Circumference, that is a measure of length. So I'm going to write down length here, remember so that is K. And it says that the circumference of B is 90% of A. So if A was 100, then B would be 90.
it is a calculator one, but 1 squared is 1, and 0 0.9 squared, I'm going to be lazy, 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 is 0 0.81. So we've got the ratio of circle A to circle B, but in case they want that written in its sort of um, with whole numbers, I'll times that one by 100, and I'll times that one by 100 as well, just to get it in that form. It then says here that square E has side length E, and square F has side length F. The area of E is 44% greater than the area of F. So we're going to try and find out what the ratio of E to F is. We're going to do area, which is K squared, and we're going to do E to F. And it says that E is 44% greater than F. So if F is 1, E would be 1.44, because that is a um, 44% increase. Now we're going to try and find out the length, okay, because it's talking about length here. So length is going to be K which means we are going to do the square root. Well, the square root of 1 is 1. Now, I know the square root is 1.44, but I'm a maths teacher, so I should do. So I'm going to do the square root of 1.44, which is just 1.2. So we have 1.2 here. Now, it wants us to do the ratio of e to f, so I think we could probably make this into, like, whole numbers um, and make it into its simplest form. They probably would accept it like this, but I'm just going to multiply them both by 10, and then I'm going to half them both. So I get the ratio is 6 to 5. So by doing all these exam questions, you start to see all of these patterns that come up and the way they ask them. So if you're watching this video, it's going to put you in a pretty strong position for your exams. Okay, A and B are two similar cylinder containers. The surface area of A to the surface area of B is 4 to 9. So we know immediately area, which is K squared, is 4 to 9. Tyler fills the container A with water. She then pours all of the water into B. Tyler repeats this and stops when container B is full of water. Work out the number of times that Tyler fills container A with water. You must show all you're working. Well, if you're thinking, oh, I've got no measurements here and I've got no measurements here, we're just concerned about ratios, how many of these will go into these. So I can't go straight from K, well, I could go straight from K squared to K cubed, but it's a little bit more complicated. So we're going to begin by doing length, which is K. So we're going to do the square root of this stuff. And when I do the square root of 4 and 9, I get 2 and 3. And so when I do the volume part, which is going to be k cubed, I'm going to take these values and I am going to cube them, or give them to the power of 3. Now, this is non-calculator, so I'm going to do 2 cubed, which is 2 times 2 times 2, is 8, and 3 cubed is 27. So we know that this ratio of the volume, the volume ratio, is 8 to 27. Now, if we just pretended that this one was 8 litres, as an example, and this one was 27 litres, it wouldn't make a difference if this was 80 and 270 in terms of how many times you'd need to use them. So we just need to find out how many 8s go into 27. And if I just do 27 divided by 8, okay, it's a non-calculator paper, we could just say how many things are going to need. So why don't we instead, non-calculator, we know that 3, no, I'll, I'll do it this way. I'll go back to what I said. I'll do 27 divided by 8. 8 goes into 27. Well, it goes into 27 3 times with 3 left over. And then we get 8 goes into 30 uh, 3 times with 6 left over. 8 goes into 60 7 times with 4 left over. So it's 3.375. So it is 3.37 times. The number of times that Tyler fills container A with water, well, they need to do it 3.37 times. So we're going to say that this is going to be 4 times in total. 4 times in total. Now, I guess you didn't need to do this division. You could have just said, OK, well, I know 8 is going to go in 3 times, and there'll be a remainder, which means we need to have 4 times overall. So we do get the 4 times. We had the 3.375, and we've rounded it to an answer of 4 as well. OK, this one is super hard. This is a very tricky question. It actually does use some stuff about half A, B, C, and C as well. So if you haven't used that yet, you might not be able to answer this question with me. So it says here that A, B, C, D, E, F, which is one that we've got here, is a regular hexagon, and the side lengths that we have are X. This hexagon is enlarged, so it's going to be a similar hexagon. Center F by scale factor P to give this bigger one, this F, G, H, I, J, K. I'm going to try and find the area of this shaded one. Well, I'm going to use the fact that the area scale factor means that you're multiplying by the scale factor squared. So because it's an area scale factor, we know we're going to be multiplying by P squared. I think what I need to do to start off with is I need to find out the area of this white hexagon, and I'm going to do that by finding out the area of one of these small triangles. Now, I know that all of these angles, that are all equilateral triangles, they're all going to be 60, and I also know that all of the lengths are going to be X as well. So 
So if I find out the area of that triangle, using a half AB sine C, that is going to be a half multiplied by X, multiplied by X, which is a half X squared, times by the sine of 60. So in my calculator, I'm not going to type in the X squared, but I am going to type in the half sine 60. Now this is a one you should know off by heart, but it is going to be root 3 over 4. So this is root 3 over 4 x squared. So one of the triangles is going to be root 3 over 4 x squared. So the A, B, C, D, E, F shape, the hexagon, is going to be 6 lots of root 3 over 4 x squared. So I'm just going to take that that was on my calculator and I'm going to times that by 6. So that is 3 root 3, it will come up as 3 root 3 over 2 x squared on your calculator. Now I'm going to do the F, G, H, I, J, K shape. It's going to be equal to 3 root 3 over 2 x squared. It is going to be multiplied by the area scale factor, and the area scale factor is P squared. Let's just quickly erase that. So it's multiplying by P squared because that's how much bigger it's got, and the length scale factor is p, so the area scale factor is this. So all we now need to do is think about what the shaded region is. Well, the shaded region is going to be the big shape, which is 3 root 3 over 2 x squared p squared, and we're going to take away the small shape, which is 3 root 3 over 2 x squared. So I'm going to factorize out the 3 root 3 over 2 at the beginning, so there will be a 3 root 3 over 2 at the beginning, that will leave me with x squared p squared minus x squared. And then we do this rather strange thing, we factorise out the x squared at the very end, which is, I think I might need to make all of this just a little bit smaller, so that I can fit this in. Let's just quickly resize this and put it here. So we're going to take the x squared at the very end, so that's 3 root 3 over 2, that would be p squared minus 1 x squared. Very, very tricky question for this. Um, but it's a four marker and you had to use a lot of different things. But I put it in similarity because of the fact that you need to multiply by P squared rather than multiplying by P. So it's a long proof, lots of different ways of doing it. I think the way that I've done it is probably the one that makes the most sense. So I'm going to be moving on to congruency after this. But I think if you actually just practice these questions, there's a lot of repetition here. You should find you can be pretty successful in these. So I of work into this document it'll be really helpful for me if you can just like this video subscribe to the channel and hopefully this will just get you set up really well for getting some top grades in your maths GCSE later on in the year